This is Coon Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. You got me. You got me. We're doing this mic thing today because the new office is a bit echoey. But you got me. You, you, can, you just, can you just clarify one thing, yeah? Since, like, Tuesday, I was on you every day. I tried every day. Not in, a, like, a pesty way, I hope. In a really pesty way. You, basically, you... Like, you know what you're like. So the news breaks, you're like, mate, oh, mate, uh, can we do a bit? No, what you try and do, you try and give it a few hours, don't you, for you've been a nice guy. So everyone's on me. Can we do a bit, mate? Can we do a bit? I'm saying, look, later in the week, later in the week, okay, next morning. All right, mate, can we do a bit today? Can we do a bit today? Look, and I was, I was so pissed off, I just thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going to take my time. Because as you get a little bit older, you get a little bit wiser. Sometimes you've got, you got to think before you open your mouth. And... I've not been very good at that sometimes over the years, but I start to understand that now. And I thought, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a simple interview on Matron Boxing YouTube. Like and subscribe if you haven't. And lo and behold, we do nearly 500,000 views on that, which was great for our channel. Normally it's just great for your channel. And I thought, that's it, I'm not going to do anything else. Then we were going to do something on Friday, weren't we, last week? And I was all over the place last week, and I just said to you, mate, do it over the weekend or do it on Monday. But I promise we'll do it on Monday. So we're here. Okay. All right, we are going to talk about this clearly uh, after, but I do want to start off by talking about you've got a big fight week, which you're mm. off to Las Vegas tomorrow for Devin Haney's fight with um, Jorge Linares, uh, Chantel Cameron, Martin Ward, um, stat card. Yeah, really good. It's actually the first time we've been the lead promoter of a fight in Vegas. So it's something that I've always wanted to do. Shout out to Mandalay Bay. We started this fight with 1,000 fans. Then it went 2,000. Uh, then it went 3,000. We sold them all out. Then it went 4,000. We sold them out. Now it's gone to 5,000. So brilliant to see fans returning in Vegas. It's a fantastic fight. Jorge Linares against uh, Devin Haney. Live on the zone all around the world. It's the fight that Devin Haney needs. But it's the fight that's going to tell us how good this kid is because the hype has been fantastic for Devin Haney. He's a young superstar in the making, but these are the kind of fights that are going to tell us if he can start calling those huge names out with people believing he can beat them as well. And it's, it's a great fight. Jorge Linares has got a cracking record against matrim fighters. I think he's 4-0. and Kevin Mitchell, Crawler, Crawler, Campbell. So he's very live in this fight. It's a really, really good card with some really good fights on as well. A massive British and Irish contingent as well. Chantelle Cameron defending her belt WBC title against her mandatory. Uh, Martin Ward's got a great fight against Zinga Fuzili, who is um, the, the leading contender with the IBF. That's a final eliminator to fight for the world title. Jay Quigley, Jason Quigley against um, uh, Mosley Jr., Great fight as well, another 50-50 fight. Ramler Ali on the card as well. Uh, Reshat Matty on the card as well. Um, Khalil Co making his pro debut as well. Really good card. Um, and yeah, all live on the zone. So heading out there tomorrow. Got bundles of meetings out there as well. Vegas and the West Coast is a great place to see people and bump into people. And looking forward to a, a really good fight week, really good card and a really good main event. And I'm nervous but excited to see what Devin Haney can do. Okay. So what I'll do is, I'll almost like just give you the floor here to kind of talk to me through the process of what occurred from around last Tuesday regarding AJ Fury. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm not here to canvas or campaign. I mean, I'm here to answer questions, but if you want to know what happened... I was sitting at home. I think the kids had just gone to sleep. I just, try to remember. Yeah, I just, I, I went for some El Paso Doritos, you know, like the tortillas, with hummus, with some chilli sauce on the top. Settled down, I thought, that's just going to be. Because you have to remember, at this stage, the fight's done, right? Tyson Fury's come out, told the world he's agreed. Fights happening, August 14th, Saudi Arabia, you know, all the conversations with the Saudis were great. The escrow accounts, 
being put into place, you know. So life is good. And then I got a text message, two text messages actually from a couple of journos going, I've just heard that uh, Wilder's won the arbitration and the rematch is ordered. Do you know anything about this? And I'm like, no. So, but quite unusual that you'd get a couple of messages like that without any kind of foundation. So I phoned Bob Aaron. And I said, Bob? And he went, oh, you're not going to believe it. Can't believe it. Just a ridiculous decision. We lost the arbitration. Can't believe it. I mean, so I said, what the fuck's going on? And he said, I know, I know, I just, no one saw this coming. I mean, they didn't even ask for the rematch. You know, they asked for damages and, you know, so. I said, well, what are you going to do about it? And he said, nothing. I said, well, what's your next move? And he went, we're fighting Wilder. I said, hold on. I said, there's got to be a deal to be done. I said, you've got to try something. Oh, look, they're not going to be interested in that. We're just going to fight Wilder and then, you know, we can do our fight later. And I thought, he said, but look, I'm talking to everyone later. Let me come back to you. And I was like, a bit shell-shocked at the time, so I put the phone down. I thought to myself, are you... I have spent five months of my life being told that I can't do something, right? And I've worked, I haven't given up, and we've done it. And you have told me all along that this arbitration process will have absolutely no bearing on AJ against Fury. And all of a sudden, just like that, you just tell me, sorry, mate, it's over. I mean, it took me a while to sort of get my head around. And this is another reason I wanted a little bit more time before I did a lot of interviews, because I wanted to analyse the situation. People's reaction, AJ was always very dubious that these people wanted this fight. And when you talk about these people, there's many different people on that side, right? But if you study, I mean, you've got to be absolutely thick as shit if you can't look back on the situation and say, at what point did Bob Arum, mainly, and even Frank Warren, but I don't even know his involvement in this, at what point did they show any positivity whatsoever about Anthony Joshua fighting Tyson Fury? You know, at first I would come out and say, we're in talks with these sites. Oh, you know, we're in a pandemic, it'll never happen. Okay, well, I'm trying to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, good luck, good luck with that, yeah, yeah. Okay, we've had a number of offers. Yeah, we've had the offers, but you know, the, it, it'll never happen. Where, where's the, the big money coming in? <laughs> Do the deal. Massive money for both of them. Chance of an op- a lifetime. Undisputed championship, load of money, coming off the back of a global pandemic, coming off the back of a global recession. Lo and behold, Eddie Hearn's done the deal. Oh, no, I, I mean, you know, w- w- yeah, but the money, you know, is we, yeah, no problem, I understand that. You know, we've dealt with these people before. And then all of a sudden, bang, Bob Aaron. I haven't spoke to Eddie Hearn for two weeks. The fight's off. It's like we spoke three days ago. No, fight's not happening. Fight's not happening. This isn't happening. All of a sudden, I get all the lawyers together. We get the, we get the final draft back from Saudi. Okay, everyone's on board. Bald. Tyson Fury comes out. The fight's on. I'm happy. It's all done. Spoke to the Saudis. Got confirmation. Let's go. Two days after. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, yeah, we've got to uh, do the rematch. I mean, what sort of ruling is that from an arbitrator to order a rematch with a specific date? And then, when the arbitration ruling comes through, you clearly see that Top Rank had the ability to terminate the agreement with Deontay Wilder back in, I think it was December. But the fact is, they didn't terminate. They kept planning the fight, they kept talking to top rank, to PBC, and I've got many, many thoughts and very valid ones about what has happened here. I want to do a little bit more digging into this, but the whole thing absolutely stinks. AJ feels that Fury never wanted to fight him, that Fury was just using his name for clout. 
I think there's a very valid argument with that. I'd like to believe that Tyson Fury wants this fight and wanted this fight. And basically, he was just fucked by others. But, you know, it's, it's very disappointing because I got to a stage where no one tried one inch. Let's just, just clarify this point. No one tried one inch to ever make this fight, apart from me and AJ and 258, right? Frank Warren and Bob Aaron, they didn't, I don't, I've not heard of one meeting, one approach, one attempt that they made to try and get a site fee or try and make this fight, okay? Now, is that because they knew they were never going to take it or is that because they thought they couldn't do it or is that because they'll just leave it to me? Not really, they didn't want me to make this fight. They didn't want me to succeed in this fight. And I've done everything I can. The only thing I couldn't do is get their team to accept this fight. So we now sit in a place where I don't really know what to believe, to be honest with you. And people say, well, you know, were you naive to believe what Top Rank told you? Maybe, but it's a confidential arbitration. I can't look into the case. What I can tell you is that the whole team told us that that arbitration will not get in the way of this fight. Tyson Fury signed a contract to fight Anthony Joshua, all right? A POS five or six weeks ago. So as far as I'm concerned, these people want the fight. But as time's evolved, you just start thinking to yourself, at what point did those, you know, and I say Bob and Frank, I mean, I don't, I'm not dealt once with Frank in this process, but at what point did Bob or Frank have one positive thing to say about this fight. So then you look at it and you say, they just wanted to use me, probably, and Matram as a scapegoat all along. Don't worry, look, we'll look like we were interested, but Eddie will never deliver this fight. Not at the moment, not in this pandemic, not in this environment, no chance, don't worry. Eddie delivers the deal, it all breaks down. And my God, and I know that a lot of the, uh, the deal points are already agreed in the previous contract, but my God, how quickly did that fight get signed? I mean, I think Tyson Fury signed it <coughs> on Saturday. If you look at the contract uh, that was on TV, Wilder signed, signed it three days before. So Wilder signed it on Thursday, Wednesday. So, I mean... It's, it's the whole thing stinks but there's nothing we can do about it because as I said leading up to this fight the only thing I can't control is their team of which I have no control over but how like where's your bollocks Tyson Fury like if you really wanted this AJ fight you have not said anything negative about this situation you have not said how disappointed you are. You have not looked at your promoters who clearly could have terminated this contract a long time ago and go, what have you done? You've just cost me, not just probably 50 or $60 million, you've cost me the chance to fight the biggest fight of all time, the undisputed fight, because you've dropped the ball. And if you haven't dropped the ball, why, why, why are you not fighting this? Why are you not trying to come up with a plan B? I've not seen one thing from Tyson Fury to say, I can't believe this, I'm devastated. We had a deal in place, I was happy, everyone was happy. Guys, I'm sorry. And, and I, don't, I don't believe it, I don't believe him. So what? So Tyson Fury just rolls over and says, oh, okay, you know, no problem. Um, I was told all along that this wouldn't happen and clearly my promoter should have terminated this a long time ago, but you've kept the conversations going and now I lose the opportunity to fight Anthony Joshua and I've got to go and fight Wilder. There's no... He's happy as Larry. So that's my thoughts, of course. We'll learn more. But now we reset and we have to plan the next fight of Anthony Joshua, which has been happening in the last four or five days. OK, so this is what slightly baffles me about the situation from your side, OK? Because obviously I'm talking to you about this now. Um, Are you baffled? I'm baffled by this, so... With something like this arbitration case, mm -hmm. which obviously had the potential... Not... Well, hold on, can okay, I... Yeah, yeah. Had, had the potential to stop the AJ Fury fight were happening. Like, I'm assuming you were aware of the date of the arbit arbitration. Mm -hmm. So, 
in your head, did you think that this was a foregone conclusion that the judge would rule in favour of Tyson Fury? Yes. I mean, there's, there's different things about ruling in favour. Ruling in favour is the, the award that was expected, if they won, was damages. OK? It's very unusual for an arbitrator to order a rematch with a set date. You know, and this is why I think the whole thing completely stinks, by the way. So, in answer to your question, when you're told by Tyson Fury's team consistently that the arbitration will have no effect on the AJ against Tyson Fury fight, and we can't get any access to that arbitration case because of confidentiality, yeah, of course. You know, Frank Warren never came out and said, well, we can't do the fight because we have to wait for the arbitration result. Tyson Fury came out and, and acknowledged that the fight was on. So what did he think about the arbitration? Did he think they were going to get ordered to rematch? Because I'll tell you what, Bob Arum certainly didn't, supposedly. You know, Bob Arum had this whole thing under control. Bob Arum is a lawyer. Bob Arum knows the system and told everybody continuously this will not be an issue. Now, in hindsight, I mean, should we have waited until the final decision? We can't wait. So what, we would have waited until last week to make a decision whether we're going to do Fury against AJ. This thing has taken me five months to get these people over the line. Could you not have said that the fight is subject to an it arbitration is, ruling? Is. The fight is subject to an arbitration ruling. But because you never spoke about that all the way no, through. Because we were told, if you listen, that this is not going to be an issue. If it was, top rank would have said to me, listen, we can do the deal, but we have to wait for the arbitration ruling, right? And if they would have said that, okay, there's nothing we can do about it. We might not have even taken a fight. And we wouldn't have wanted to wait till now to, to actually plan or start negotiations. So we got the negotiations in place. Again, they signed a contract for the Fury fight. So when they sign a fight for the Fury fight with ongoing uh, arbitration, you've got to think they're quite confident, right? That they're going to be okay. But yeah, in hindsight, you could look back at it and say, well, maybe we should have waited until last week to start negotiations. But we would have been like, then you won't see the fight till 2022, which you might not know anyway. But again, maybe I was too naive to trust people. <coughs> you know, maybe I was too naive to listen to these people who are supposedly experts and been in the game for so long that it, will have, it wouldn't be a problem. And yes, I think anyone who knows the process, expected if there was a win for Deontay Wilder, it was damages, rather than an arbitrator ordering a rematch before a specific date. Tyson Fury put on his Instagram the other day, um, on his stories that, well, he suggested that Deontay Wilder wanted in excess of $20 million to step aside. So... This step aside thing, which was a talked about thing for two or three days and everyone was an expert on it. Yeah, just bung him a few quid, blah, 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 blah. We saw Malik Scott come out with a, uh, something on his Instagram to say that we're not stepping aside, etc. So officially, was any amount of money suggested from Team Wilder so they would move away to allow this fight happening? The answer to your question is Team Fury made absolutely zero attempt to try and save the Anthony Joshua fight. Zero attempt. I don't believe there was a conversation. I don't believe there was an offer. I don't believe anything. So, and this is another reason why the whole thing stinks. Because as I said from that conversation, Bob Arum is aware of the work that's gone in to make this fight. And to just call up and say, oh, I can't believe it. It's preposterous. And we're just going to go ahead with the fight. So cheers, mate. Thanks for everything. And we'll catch up soon, yeah? No. I mean, if this was me in that case, I would have done absolutely everything I could to try and save this fight. They didn't try and do one thing. And that also sits on Tyson Fury, because he never tried to do one thing either. You know, and I can't, I don't believe... What was Fury meant to do in that situation? Stand up for himself to say, what the fuck's gone on here? You've told me I'm fighting Anthony Joshua. I've had an offer for all this money. I've accepted the offer. We're moving forward. I've spoke to Saudi Arabia. I've signed an agreement already for this fight, and you told me I would not have to fight Tyson Fury, uh, Deontay Wilder, and now it's come out, you could have terminated that agreement from December, but you didn't. So, quite frankly, you've cost me 60 million bucks, 
and an opportunity to fight for the undisputed championship in the biggest fight in history. That's what you say to people that work for you. Because if I would have done that, and this happened the other way around, I would expect AJ to phone me up and give me a double bollocking. Because that's what everyone's working to. Now, I don't know. Was Tyson Fury in on this? Was he aware of this the whole time? Were they just fucking around? I have no idea. But he's just, there's no, it's just, it's too easy. It's like they're happy. And this not so much on Fury. It's like, it's like his team are happy with this result. So why are they happy with this result? Eddie, where, where does potential step-aside money come from? Does it come from the site fee? It would, come, it would come from the person who has an issue, who lost the case. But, by the way, I was expecting, I, I thought to myself, I know what's going to happen here. Aram's going to be on to Saudi to contribute to the step-aside. He'll probably be on to me and AJ to contribute to the step-aside, but I probably would have. If it was me, I would have tried to do the step-aside myself. I would have found out the number that gets this done. How much is that, in your opinion? I had no idea. I mean, I reckon Deontay Wilder will make, and this is just fan speculation, I reckon he will make somewhere between 12 and $15 million to fight Fury in the summer. So there's a number. Trust me when I say there's a number. We could have looked at Fury will fight Wilder, sorry, Fury will fight AJ, and the winner fights Deontay Wilder. We could have looked at that. But there's always a number. So the first thing you do is you find the number. And once you have the number, then you go to work. Call the number $20 million, right? If it was $20 million. Okay, so Fury's now going to make, I don't know, $20 million to fight Deontay Wilder in the summer. Right? That's about $60 million less than he would have made. Okay. So even if he gave him the 20, he's making 40 million more. But even if you go around with your begging pot, to try and raise that money to get this deal over the line, I would have done it all. You know? I would have gone to me, I would have gone to Saudi, I would have gone to Fury, I would have gone to my own business in top rank and gone, how do we make this happen? But this is not your job, you're saying? it's not. But I didn't lose the case. I didn't, you know, but it wasn't even, even when I spoke to Bob and said, Bob, is there going to be, no, 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 I've spoke to Al Heyman, no, it's, there's no interest in that, so we're just going to do the fight on July 24th, and by the way, everyone's already signed, so... Sorry, mate. But if this was the other way around, I would have gone out, you know, I mean, I would have asked you. Next thing, we would have been on GoFundMe. Whatever it takes to make this fight. But there was no, there was no interest to make this fight. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, just one more question about this. So, I'm using these complete random examples, yeah? Just say they were earning 50 million a piece, yeah? AJ and Fury. Just say, right, for example, yeah. yeah? It's more or less whatever. Mm -hmm. 50 million a piece. So, effectively, step aside money, would it come out of that 50, like 100 no, million? Or no. is it something on top of that? It would come out of wherever it was negotiated, right? It would come out of wherever it needs to come out. Now, would AJ have given up some of his purse? For a Deontay Wilder step aside? Maybe not. He never got asked. We was expecting to get asked. I was expecting them to get straight onto Saudi. Now, would Saudi have paid more for the step aside? Maybe not. Worth a call? Or not? You're just going to give up? Because you can't be that bothered if you're just going to give up and roll over. The whole thing stinks. Right? So... Again, no, no conversations for step aside. I mean, Bob may say, yeah, I spoke to Al Heyman and asked him, would you step aside? And he said, no, and that was it. We just moved on. Oh, great, great effort, mate. Well done. So, again, you know, what it comes down to is, did they ever want the fight? Did they ever want us to succeed? I think they, the, everything that I've seen now, everything that I reviewed is that we were the scapegoat for not being able to deliver this deal, and then it just falls away, and it's just their fault. Let them fucking... You can imagine, I can, even, I can even picture their conversations. Let them fucking go. Let them do all the work. They ain't going to get this deal over the line. No problem. Then we did. Fuck. So, it's fine. Honestly speaking, is this fight fucked now? Because this seemed to be the best ever chance yeah, it was I, ever going to happen. I think that... 
we we couldn't have, and I'm not expecting people to take sides over this, we could not have done any more. I worked my absolute bollocks off to get this done. I've done everything. And at the end of the day, I could look myself in the mirror and say, you've done a great job. You delivered this fight. Both fighters were happy. You made them an absolute fortune. You delivered a chance for an undisputed fight, the biggest in the sport. But I can't control the actions of another team. I don't know what to think anymore because I don't trust them. So I can't, there's no point in me sitting in a normal world with normal people. I believe that fight gets done every day of the week with the deal that was on the table. But I can't tell you what they're going to do now. You know, I saw Fury on ESPN, again, happy as Larry that he'd got the Deontay Wilder fight. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to fight AJ in December. Yeah, all done. I have no idea. I can't trust them to say, you know, again, maybe there's a little bit of naivety from me to think that we're dealing with the same kind of people because we're not. So I can't, at this point... I don't really even fancy telling you, yeah, no problem, mate. We're going to do a fight in the summer and then we're going to fight in December. Who knows? Who knows what they're going to do? So, the deal you did for the 14th of August, mm -hmm. that can't go roll on. Over. Roll yeah. over to, if you take the mandatory with Usyk, uh, Wilder and Fury, Fury beats Wilder. But mate, I have no idea what they're going to do. I mean, I could send them a contract now. You know, obviously, Saudis, Prince Khalid, absolutely devastated. Devastated. And shout out to Prince Khalid. He may have done as much work on, as this on me, as me, to get this over the line. Right? And I feel gutted for them because they made a commitment. They'd even made the plans for starting to build the stadium and everything was in full flow. And at no point did I ever feel this fight wasn't going to happen. So, you know, everyone's putting a lot of work. So the answer is now, is there an opportunity to do this in December? You know, or is it February? I mean, we, we, you know, the first thing that happened last week, and one of the reasons that I didn't want to sit here for an hour and talk to you was, we've got to plan our future. Okay, so normally I would have even had as I've said to you in other interviews, plan B and C already mapped out just in case, but all the effort's gone into this. You know, I haven't not looked at other options at all, but there's been no real focus on other options. So, you know, that has been the focus last week. Excuse me, I've got an itchy nose. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to move forward. Right now, I'm not really... Like I said, the feeling from our camp is they have absolutely no interest in this fight. So, you know, will that change? Like again, it's not even, um, it's not even, ah, uh, oh, look, we've got to do this fight on July 24th and I've done everything I can to try and get him to step aside or do a deal, but I can't do it. But should we move forward with the fight in December now? Let's get it done, let's get it signed. We're all happy with the terms. It's not even that, it's not. So we'll see, the focus now has to be on Anthony Joshua because he's the real one. He's the one that I know what he says he does. There's no deviation. We have a plan and we stick to it. So now we've got to finalise his plan. And that doesn't involve Tyson Fury at the moment. We would absolutely love to fight Tyson Fury for the Undisputed Championship or whatever. It could be Deontay Wilder. Who knows? But the focus now has got to be to reset. You know, we've got probably three or four options of what to do next, and we've got to decide which one we're going to do. Let's talk about the WBO situation. Mm -hmm. So where are we with that at the moment? The fight has been ordered or yes. goes to court, so, uh, to Persbids. So last Tuesday or Wednesday, the WBO sent an email to us and said, we want you to show calls as to why we shouldn't order Persbids. And what that means is you've got to give us an excuse as to why the Wilder, uh, sorry, the Fury AJ fight might still happen, etc. And we didn't have an excuse, really. So I wrote to them on Friday and said, look, I want to catch up with AJ and the team on at the weekend to decide what we're going to do. Could I come back to you on Monday? And they come back on Saturday and said, no, we're going to now order that fight. So I said, fair enough. We can't make the AJ Wilder fight anyway because they've signed. So 
that's another reason that they uh, sent the letter in. So we have 10 days to negotiate that fight. After those 10 days, if we can't agree a deal, it, purse bids will be called probably seven days after. And um, we, they've ordered a maximum split, I think, of 80-20, and I think we have to send in some bout agreements for them to finalise what the split will be. And then we will make a decision if we'll move forward with a fight. I've been speaking to Alex Krasuk. Um, I think there's a deal to be done for that fight. Um, so I think that's the, the like, most likely of the next few options. Um, what are the chances that Joshua and you, yourself decide to vacate the WBO? Um, only really comes down to business. Like I think if the deal's not right financially, AJ, I spoke to him last week and we've already had these conversations with uh, AJ and Rob McCracken over the last, probably over the last year or so about Usyk, more than happy to fight Alexander Usyk. Anthony Joshua has continuously faced everybody he needs to face. You know, you go back, I bore you again with a resume, but you know, after beating Martin, you know, who now resurfaces, by the way, you know, in Brazil, he fights Klitschko, he fights Takam, he unifies against Joseph Parker, he boxes Alexander Povetkin, Andy Ruiz, Andy Ruiz, Pulev, could be Usyk again. Show me a resume like that in boxing. In the heavyweight division, it's, it's unparalleled. So, I expect him, oh, I know he's more than happy to fight Alexander Usyk. It's just going to come down to business. If there's a deal to be done that he feels is the right deal. And also, you know, this whole thing about, well, Fury, you, if, you, if you listen to Fury's interviews and then you see what's happening in the movement of their team, it's two completely different things. So, you watch the interview on ESPN on Saturday. I'm going to knock out Fury. I'm straight into Joshua. Yep, absolutely. No excuses yet. Like, on that stage, you say, well, do we just lock in that fight for December? You know, so do we want... When can we fight? You know, AJ's going to be ready orig <coughs> originally August 14th. We may push that back a week or two because now... Um, he was willing to fight, obviously, with McCracken at the Olympics, but leaving then to come back into camp. Probably end of, end of August, something like that. OK, you're going to fight end of August and then go into the December fight. Does that give you enough time? There's lots of things to consider. But I think the most likely scenario, subject to if Usyk will take the fight and you know if the terms are right for everybody, and that's probably going to be quite easy as set out by the WBO if they're fair, I see that fight happening next. I think that's the likely scenario. To your knowledge, where does this leave Joe Joyce? Um, I mean, Joe Joyce... Joe, again, they've completely dropped the ball with that as well. Because if I'm Joe Joyce's team, why, why are we now in May and this fight between Usyk and Joyce was ordered in February or something like that? So I think someone's dropped the ball there as well. But again... Not my business. Joe Joyce, this is not good news for Joe Joyce because Joe Joyce was not a mandatory challenger. He was just the next in the rankings. So if Fury boxed AJ, it was going to be Usyk against Joyce, which would have ultimately ended up being for the full world title, actually, because they would have had to vacate after the first AJ Fury fight. But if Joshua fights Usyk, then Joe is not a mandatory. He's just a, a number two ranked fighter in the WBO, probably go to number one. But then, of course, the WBO mandatory has been dealt with. So as a, as a champion, it will be 12 or 18 months after that, probably more with a rotation, that Joe Joyce would get his shot with the WBO. But listen, if we don't do a deal and vacate the WBO, Joe Joyce will be singing and dancing because Usyk will have to fight Joyce for the world title. So he's not out of the running yet, but... I mean, I feel like they should have put more pressure on the WBO, but that's another story. But Joe Joyce should be saying now, I need to fight because I've been waiting since November. You know, I beat Daniel Dubois. Daniel Dubois fighting next two weeks' time or something like that. So um, I've, I've actually spoke to Sam Jones a few times about it, who's probably as pissed off as I was because it's fucked him as well, really, and, and Joe Joyce's team. So, yeah. The, the two dates you've potentially put out for AJ are the 14th or the 20th? No, no, it won't be. No, 21st or the 28th yeah, of could, August. Yeah, again, pending on, you know, all of a sudden we've gone from 
everything that AJ has done since the Pulev fight is geared to fight Tyson Fury, right? All the sparring he's been doing, all, all the drills he's been working on, absolutely everything. So now, if we fight Usyk, we sit back and we go, okay, now we're fighting a different kind of fighter. We're fighting a southpaw. Um, we've got to bring in the, rel rel the relevant sparring partners, etc. All that work's going on behind the scenes now. So later than earlier. So yes, end of August, maybe even early September. But again, again, subject to this supposed possible December fight, but we're not hanging our hat on that anymore, or even our coat, or we're not hanging anything on that anymore. We've got to work on the next fight. Well, we're talking to Wembley. We're talking to Spurs. We, you know, when we looked at the end of July fight, or even early August with Wembley, the, the big question was, can you guarantee a full capacity by then? And the answer was no. Now, nice bit of movement over the weekend with fans coming back. If we're end of August, early September, do we have a better chance? You know, we're not as under as much pressure on the financials for this fight as the mega fight, if you like, with Fury and AJ. So could we go in with a 40,000 capacity and upwards? Yes, we'd love to fill it up. But the plan is to stage that fight in London. Or Cardiff. Subject to when it is. Is there a possibility if you don't kind of get the go-ahead with numbers in terms of crowd here in the UK, could you go to America? To fight Usyk? No, I think, I think we'll, there is a good chance we could fight in America next, but it wouldn't be against Usyk. Okay. I think if we're going to move forward with the Usyk fight, it'll be in London. OK. Um, potential opponents if it's not Usyk, because now, because we've been focused on Fury for so long, we knew Usyk was kind of there. But when you look past that, who have you got that could potentially fight AJ next? There's quite a few. I mean, if you're going to America, I mean, he's already messaged me. It's like deja vu, Andy Ruiz. He, he wants, wants it. He, he, he Instagrammed me and said, I'm ready. Let's do it. AJ Ruiz free. And I said, this is like deja vu. That's a fight I think we'd be interested in. Um, if you're going to America, you know, Luis Ortiz is another guy you could fight. Um, if you're doing the UK, I don't know, Dillian White. Is that a fight to make? Um, look, I, I think the in an ideal world, if there's a if there's good business to be done with Alexander Usyk all round, it's got to be good business for him as well. I think that's the fight next. But you know, I wouldn't rule out any scenario at the moment for Anthony Joshua over the next. You know, like I said, we've probably got ten days to decide what we're going to do. But um, you know. I think there was, a, there was a lot of anger from everybody last week. Me, AJ, you know, just that these people, I can't believe these people, you know. And he, he felt all along they didn't want the fight. Um, but I, I, I felt differently. I never felt it about the team, but I felt Fury wanted the fight. Maybe he didn't. But, you know, certain people didn't want this fight to happen, basically. And they got their way for now. What did you make of their little back and forth, which went on for quite some time last week? Well, that was, which included a bare knuckle fight offer from Tyson yeah. Fury as well. That was, you don't really see that from AJ, do you? That was him pissed off. That was him thinking, you're an absolute time waster, mate. All you do is talk. You talk, you talk, you talk, but you have no substance. You don't really want to do this fight. And that's how he felt. And um, you don't really see that from him. You know, I mean, posting, you know, Fury behind the barriers while all those... Billy's lot were having a rumble around and goading him. And it's a shame because at that point, it's like, oh, I wish this fight was happening. You know, imagine, because you imagine the build-up. I dreamt about this fight for a long time. You know, all throughout this process of trying to get it over the line, all I could think about was the build-up. All I could think about was how big this fight is for boxing. All I could think about was the actual fight itself and fight night and just being just so buzzed by this opportunity and the opportunity to give to Anthony to become undisputed. That's the thing that kicks me in the nuts the most because this was it for us, you know? Everything that we worked towards from sitting in this office was to become undisputed champion and we had it and they should have been taking this fight and they didn't. And he's, he's, he's okay with it because he knows we couldn't have done any more. But I'm not okay with it because 
I, I couldn't do it. You know, I failed. Although, you know, he tells me and other people tell me, well, you didn't fail. You actually, you did it. We didn't do it, did we? Because they ain't in the fight. Yeah, but you can't control that. I know I can't, but we didn't do it. So I look at it as I failed. You know, I went out. I did everything that people said we couldn't do, and I got it done. But they didn't get in the ring. You know, I had a $500 bet with Mike Coppinger about four months ago that the fight wouldn't happen. And I said, you, may, you can make it 500000 I'm telling you now, this fight's happening. But thankfully, I only made it 500 bucks. Have you paid him? Not yet. I will do when I see him in Vegas this week. Because I was, just, I was so driven to make it. And I, I, I felt like I won't be denied on this. And I've done it. I've done it. I've got the money. I've got the deal. I've got everything. But I couldn't get Fury in the fight. You mentioned Dillian White there. So <laughs> there's never a, a, not a good time to mention a, a Dillian White and Joshua fight. Everyone would be all over it if that, that's what his next option was. But So that, that's a potential option for AJ. Was, but what, yeah. what for Dillian White, if not, we're assuming he's going to be out in the summer, obviously. Yeah, I, mean, I think speaking to Dillian and his team, originally we looked at planning on getting him out in July in America. I think he wants to push that to sort of August, September now. But I'd like him to box twice this year. You know, there's some great fights out there for Dillian. I, my, my plan, my strategy for him was to go to America and not have an easy fight, but, you know, he's had a lot of tough fights back-to-back, -back, a lot of pressure. He's still improving as well. He's got a new training team. I would have liked him to go to America to fight. I think maybe now he might fight in the UK. Um, but again, you know, this, this is also bad news for the division or the contenders because... It just it puts a bigger logjam in. So okay, so if AJ and Fury fight in December or January, they might have two fights, and you know now Joe, Joe Joyce is waiting. Dillian White deserves his shot. The WBC is he mandatory or not? Uh, it's a good question. It's a good question. I don't think. <laughs> I mean, Dillian White should have had his shot ages ago. He was mandatory. There was a ruling in place. He lost to Alexander Povetkin, okay? And then Povetkin became mandatory, although unofficially, but was, but with no mandatory due, all right? Then Dillian White beat Povetkin. In my mind, Dillian White is the mandatory challenger for Tyson Fury. And at some point, the WBC have to order that fight, you know? So, again, we'll be waiting forever, but... I feel like all these people, Joe Joyce, you know, even Usyk's been waiting for a long time, Dillian White, this whole process just backs everything up. Who's the IBF mandatory right now? So it's Philip Hergovic against someone. And by the way, if you're a heavyweight contender um, and you're in the IBF, please step up to the plate because we're going down the rankings and it's like, oh, come oh on. my God, Michael Hunter. Michael the Bounty Hunter. Oh, man, I'm the bounty. I just need my ch chance. I'm going to beat everyone, blah, blah, blah. Purse bid comes. Uh, apparently, there was going to be a load of bidders in the purse bid. One bidder, me. I win. Good money. Yep. Yeah, um, Edward, apologies. The card stopped. Yeah. No conspiracy. Was like that, He's Hunter. talking about Michael yeah. Hunter. Yes. So I was just saying, Michael Hunter puts his posters out. Yes, yeah, fighting her. Which, I mean, the winner of that fight is IBF mandatory. Granted, you're going to have to wait till next year, but it's still a nice spot to be in, right? 65-35 is the split with the IBF. Very nice. Um, he pulls out the fight. Like, with a day to go before you've got to get the contracts in. Now I'm, I'm fighting someone else. Fights Mike Wilson, okay, in June. And then we go down the list. Um, Joseph Parker's having an operation on his elbow. He couldn't do it. Um, Andy Rees. It's now on Andy Rees and Ajit Kabayel. Okay. No, I think they've said no. It's now on Tony Yoka, right? And then it's on Luis Ortiz. Someone take the fight. Have you made approaches? It's not, it doesn't work like that. The IBF send out a letter to the camps and they have to respond and say, yes, we accept the position. It's Callis Allen's job, this. Not... No, no, it's not really Callis. It's not a job to be done. Obviously, we're co-promoters on Philip Hergovic, me and Callis, we're talking all the time. We're all baffled. But what happens now is it goes down the list. So when someone says no... The IBF then call the next person and say, will you accept the fight, not the terms, but will you accept the fight with Hergovic, final eliminator, 
to become mandatory with the IBF. And when you say, yes, I do, negotiations are ordered. Everyone said, no, I don't. Right? So next up, yeah, it was Andy Rees, Tony Yoka, uh, Ajit Kabaya said no as well. Um, and I think, yeah, I think now... So have Yoka and Ortiz declined? Uh, to your knowledge? No, I think this was like Friday. So I don't think Yoka's declined yet. And then I think it goes to Luis Ortiz, which is a great fight, by the way. And a fight I would be willing to pay good money for in America. It's a great fight. Then it goes down. I mean, Dempsey McLean, I think, is there. Zhang, Bacoli. I mean, someone's going to get a shot shot out of nothing, really. So Why did you just offer it to Bacoli? I'm sure Billy Nelson would take that for Bacoli, yeah, wouldn't he? But he's got about five or six people to get past first. That, if everybody says no, Bacoli will get the chance. I think he's 15. I'm sure he'd take it. Well, it might go down to him. You never know. Very good chance it could. OK. Um, we need, obviously, uh, to talk about... Great Britain and Scotland have a new undisputed champion, yeah. 140 pound. Absolutely sensational uh, performance and fight from uh, Josh Taylor against uh, Jose Ramirez, Eddie. Yeah, I mean, I think, firstly, I would like to say it was the most criminal piece of promotion I've ever seen. Um, and just while I'm on that rant, you've got a, a young fighter there, Josh Taylor, that is absolutely exceptional, right? Great character. Funny, fiery, can always stick the nut in, doesn't he, at the presser. And I have to be honest with you, I didn't see any, outside of the, the hardcore boxing audience, I didn't see anyone talking about this fight. I didn't see it in the media. And forget that it was on Fight TV, okay? So, you know, it was still on TV. Where was the promotion? You know, I just, it, it's, it's, like I said, criminal promotion. Anyway, on to the fight. Absolutely brilliant. Josh Taylor has done everything that young fighters should do, which is take the biggest t risks throughout, right, for the fact that him and his team believe they can win those fights. You know, they go through, you look at Barancic, uh, pro-grade fight, which we promoted, fantastic fight, and now on away soil in Las Vegas with three American judges, right, fighting an American, um, and goes and does it. Absolutely brilliant, fantastic fighter. Just should just just should should be coming home. They should shut down Edinburgh, right? He should be on an open top bus, right? This is what I'll be doing with a megaphone, shouting out, "This is one of the greatest fighters this country has ever produced," and he should be an absolute superstar, and he is not, and that is a big big shame because what he has done is something that you never see. So I hope this bit of promotion helps because people should really give him massive, massive props because he's done it in a fantastic fashion and he's very good as well. One of the talking points during the week was the fact I mean, it was almost getting boring in the end. We know it wasn't picked up by any major UK broadcaster. Um, so I don't want you to like, single anyone out, but just in your opinion, explain, because people were saying, like, for instance, Sky... I've got Logan Paul and, and Mayweather, but they wouldn't pick up. I don't even know if they were offered it, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I, we don't own, I don't own the rights for Josh Taylor. No one approached me to put that fight on Sky. Did they go direct to Sky? I, I don't know. If they would have approached me, I would have tried to get it on Sky. It's a brilliant fight. Um, but again, you know, I know it wasn't on a big platform, but it, even irrelevant. Like, where was the promotion? I didn't see anything on that fight, anything, other than Josh Taylor's Instagram or Josh Taylor's videos or IFL or Boxing Social out in Vegas. So, I don't know. I mean, that's irrelevant. He's done the business. He's, he's, a, he's cemented his position as a legend of British boxing. It's just, like I said, he should be a superstar. He should be a superstar because he deserves it. Um... What's Scarpa weight and fight Terence Crawford yeah, at 147? I think that Josh, um, you know, I think he's got a great team, um, great strength and conditioning team, of course. You know, with the boys out there, obviously work with us as well, with Dan and those guys. Done an amazing job with him. But I do think 
He's always been tight at 140 pounds, and he says it himself. So what else is there to do? And I think he has a mandatory against Jack Cattrall, does he? Or probably a few. Jack Cattrall steps aside yeah, to allow... Yeah, yeah. Probably a few mandatories now, but I don't think Josh is going to be looking at, at Jack Cattrall saying, yeah, that's the next fight for me. I think he's going to go, right, OK, give me the money, give me the fame. You know, is it, I don't know, is it Mikey Garcia? Is it Terence Crawford? Is it, I don't know. But um, I like the Crawford fight. I mean, I saw, I just, I saw Bob's comments about that, about Crawford, you know, basically saying he does no numbers. I don't really think we're going to be able to get him in a big fight. I mean, <laughs> so, yeah, but I think, I think Josh will now be looking at it and saying, give me what I deserve, which is the biggest fights out there and the most amount of money possible. But he's only 18, isn't he? It's so, mad. Oh, it's mad. Brilliant. brilliant. It's a fantastic story, you know, and what I love about it as well is, I know we keep, keep going on about the criminal promotion, but he's, he's such a small team, isn't it? You know, like there's no, for all the great thing about promotion and all the noise and the razzmatazz, with him, there is zero razzmatazz. You think he's gone out to Vegas with ben, ben and Dan and, you know, a couple of others, Lee McGregor and a couple of pals and, you know, he's... he's Lee Wiley, apparently. And he's... Um, I don't know his name, but he's original coach. Shout out to him as well. Amazing story. And he's done it he's done it just under the radar, hasn't he? And I think it's a great story. And I think, like I said, I think he's probably pissed off about the noise of the fight, but I think he's gone, do you know what? I'm gonna do my talking in a ring and I'm just gonna go and win the fight. And he's done it. I didn't see the fight. I woke up i got this, I'm trying to turn my phone off now when I go to bed. Do you do that or do you keep it on? No, my phone's always on 24-7. Do you check your phone in the night? Yes. That's what I've been doing for years and I've just decided to myself now and this actually all started when we got news of the arbitration last week. Got to about 11 o'clock, I went, do you know what? My phone was going nuts. I thought, I'm just going to turn it off. And I woke up at 7 o'clock the next morning. I haven't slept eight hours through for years. So since then, I've been turning it off at night. And it's been working really well. And now I've completely forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, but after the week you've had, I don't fucking no, blame you. But it's nice, because you've got to get your sleep. What are we talking about, anyway? We're talking about Josh Taylor, to, but anyway. How did we get onto phones? Uh, oh, I can't remember now. But yeah, Josh Taylor, absolutely fantastic. Um, and, yeah. Right. Dates. Give me some dates. We know you haven't got anything. Obviously, you're in the US this weekend. Yeah. You've got nothing the week after. Correct. Which is like the fifth weekend. Fifth, yeah. The weekend so after that. We plan on being in Newcastle. We want to announce that ASAP. We're just waiting on uh, Ponce's signed contract, which we've been promised, but still waiting. Um, and then we can announce that fight. That'll be June the 12th. And then... Well, some of the card fits still on the card? Yeah, that fits. Um, Martin Ward... Um, the other Martin yes. Ward. Joe Laws, April Hunter, Solomon Dakers, Ellie Scottney, um, the list goes on. And then June 19th is nothing. June 25th we will be in Italy and June 26th we'll be announcing a show shortly. Not in, in the UK? No, not in the UK. Um, and then July, fight camp will start here. It'll be a three-week run. And... That was due to start on July 24th. But if AJ, sorry, Fury Wilder goes on 24th, we will start on 31st. I don't even believe Fury Wilder will happen on the 24th. I don't believe that either. I think it'll be pushed back. But anyway. There's two dates Bob gave, wasn't it? One was the 14th of August and one was the 24th, I believe. Yeah. Okay, but who knows? I mean, what was he saying? Yesterday I was lying, today I'm telling the truth. So we'll see what, what next comes from Bob. Um, so yeah. But it, fight camp will start July 24th or July 31st. Three weeks. Yeah, look. You could, they can't see that on camera, can I? No. So look, this is... It's only a few bits, but this is week one. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Rematch. Ooh. Or rematch and rematch. Fuck off. Yes. Are you doing that? Yes. Are you actually doing that? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, oh, that's that one. That one. 
So this is week two, World Championship, domestic, British Commonwealth and oh. European. Trying. Fuck, trying. get that one done. I'm trying, I'm get trying. that one done. Quality. Yeah, just try, try and do that one as well. Etc. Loads more to come, but fight camp's banging. Oi, that is banging. Yeah. So, Shit. Going for it, fight camp. Okay, what, um, can I ask you about Christopher Lovejoy? Because he said that he kind of heard from you, put on his Instagram, that I'd heard from Eddie Hearn or something. Okay. Are you trying to do him in Wardley? I, I have not spoken to Lovejoy since he left London in November. Um, I watched his fight with Man Manuel Char. He got the money. Uh, I would do Lovejoy against Johnny Fisher at fight camp. Okay. So... Maybe we could look at that. Well, what about Solomon Dakers? Solomon Dakers, yeah, he can fight Solomon Dakers. We can do that in Newcastle, if you want, June the 12th. Because even Wardley have been having a little bit of yeah, back and Fabio. forth. Fabio's ready to take a, a big fight now, so, yeah. A uh, lot of questions I always get is, are you bringing back Miss Ebony Bridges? Yes, we're in talks with Ebony at the moment. Um, obviously, a lot of the work we're doing in September is to look at you right, mate. Going through my notes. No, I'm just oh, looking. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's such a good card. I'll make sure no one can see this. No, so, September the 4th, we're planning the Warrington rematch. Lara, right. yeah. Look at this fight, right? So, this is the Leeds card. Yes. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Question. Again, so. Not so sure yet, but. Right. No, oh. that's not the case. Oh, I thought so you that's now going to be... Right. Good fight. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Very so, interesting so fight. You've got I'm glad you're doing it that, for that right person. Now. I shouldn't be telling you this. But let me show you the fight that I'm trying to make. Yes! <laughs> and that, that would be that card. Oh. Yeah, that, one as well. yeah. that as well? Yeah. Oh, God. So, yeah. Like it. Very, very good. People start moaning about that, they'll moan at fucking anything. Yeah. So that's the initial plan. When are you hoping to announce, well, you said you want to announce Newcastle first, uh, but Fight Camp, when do you want that locked in so to announce? there'll be announcements from early June. Early June, so not long now, and we'll be announcing uh, our future, we'll be announcing our upcoming cards, and yeah. When you talk about your future, obviously, I know we've spoken about this in the past, we know, not you've been reluctant, but you've just been kind of waiting for the right moment yeah. to talk, yes about your future regarding Sky Design, etc. That's what you're referring to, yes? Yes, early June. Okay. So, okay, early June. So your card in Newcastle, mm -hmm. we don't know where that's winding up on? No. That is a Sky yeah. show? Yes, it will be, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, well, you seem a little bit more positive this week, Edward. I'm fine. I'm all right. Look, we're breathing, aren't we? So, um... No, I was, I was gutted last week, absolutely gutted. I'm still gutted. But, you know, you can only control what you can control. And you can only do your best. I've done my best, done everything I could. But I couldn't control the other side. So good luck to them. Love to still make the fight. Um, and we'll take care of our business and we'll move forward. And firstly, we'll have an unbelievable show this Saturday in Las Vegas, live on the zone, Mandalay Bay. Andrew McCart, no doubt, will still be out there on one of the greatest trips of all time. He's done. He's, he's in done. week he's four. Paid. What kind of ridiculous I mean, question what? is that? Well, clearly he's being paid, but... Suppose, but yeah. He's basically on a freebie in Vegas for a month. He's what not a on job. a freebie. To be honest with you, he had done well, Billy Joe. He's on a freebie. He's, he's, he doesn't pay for it himself, does he? So he's on a freebie and you're paying him and he's been in Vegas. And the rumour is, I don't want to put anyone in it, right? But apparently Andrew McCart was absolutely rat ass last night, right? And has been boozing for a long period of time. A lot of people say he's neg neglecting the job. I don't want to put those kind of rumours out there. But I will catch up with him on Wednesday 
in Las Vegas and we will do a sit down with Andrew McCart and I will just be making sure for you that he's being well behaved this week. He probably will be because he'll be so hung over after the Josh Taylor. He told me he didn't even drink that night. Oh, yeah, right. He, to be fair, he has, he has posted today saying I'm rough as a piece of toast or something like that or badger's ass. Yeah, that's the same Same. thing. Yeah. He said, said, I'm as rough as a piece of toast or whatever. Uh, A badger's ass is the same. And have you spoken to Billy Joe? Uh, Not for, not last week, no. Just after his operation in in America. But I mean, obviously dependent on how this heals, but there's still fights out there for Billy Joe. Billy, Billy Joe's stock has gone through the roof. One, because he's incredibly entertaining. Two, because he fought a great fight. And three, because, you know, he, he came out and didn't do what a lot of people done against Canelo Alvarez. So I think there's a big future for Billy Joe. It comes down to now what he wants to do. If he, if he gives it a couple of weeks and says, do you know what, I'm, this is what I want to do. I want to come back. I want to try and win my world title back. There's some big fights out there for him. Or he may say, I'm a two-weight world champion. I just boxed in the biggest fight I could. Made a lot of money. I'm done. But it, if whatever he, want, he wants to do, we'll support him. If he wants to fight again, absolutely. I think, you know, maybe come back with a fight later this year and then straight into a big fight, or he might want to go straight into a big fight now. Eubank. Eubank's a big fight. You know, I mean, I, I want to see Eubank fight Demetrius Andre. That's what I want, because I think, you know, while we're looking for that big fight for Demetrius, Eubank, good name, good fighter, good test, good profile. I think that fight does really, really well, UK or Europe. And I've reached out, I've made Callis Allen an offer for that fight. And he's, they're very interested. So we'll see, see where it goes. Just a couple more quick things. Canelo, mm-hmm. Plant, how are we looking for that at the moment? So I'm due to meet Louis de Cubis in Las Vegas this week. We'll start looking into that fight, going through you know, the, the relevant options on when and where that fight can take place. I spoke to Canelo and, you know, I just told him I'm going to go away, um, get all the information for you, come back and present it. And he said, good, crack on. So that's what we're doing. And, you know, I think that's, again, you know, I think subject to Caleb Plant wanting that fight, subject to the Is team. Is accurate about the 10 million he's wanting for that fight? I don't know. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Um, but I think, obviously, it's a huge amount of money in that fight. It's a great fight. And Canelo's the biggest draw in US boxing. So, subject to Caleb Plant wanting that fight, which I would think he does, and the team, I think that's a straightforward conversation and you know, hopefully we can, we can get that over the line for September. Um, just a, a quick women's update as well. So, I'm a, obviously, you're assuming to put yeah, uh, Courtney Ball on one of your summer yeah. camp shows. Yeah. Terry Harper's obviously out for a while yeah. at the moment. Chantel Cameron's in action. Savannah Marshall. Yeah, Savannah Marshall will be fighting probably at fight camp as well, uh, defending and trying maybe pick up another belt in the middleweight division. Um, Chantel Cameron defends against Melissa Hernandez in Vegas this weekend. Then I'm talking to Lou DeBella actually about making some unifications and getting that moving. Um, Ellie Scottney will fight in Newcastle. I want to see her move forward and fight for a world title this year. Um, Sandy Ryan, of course, will debut. Terry Harper just had a hand operation. She'll be back later this year. Um, Taylor. Katie Taylor is going to fight most likely on the I'll just say on a Josh Warrington card in Leeds. You know, she's a big Leeds fan, didn't they? <coughs> but, who? Katie Taylor. No, I know. Against oh, who? Right, okay. Um, she's got about 17 mandatories at the moment, so we've reached out actually to one of them, which is Estelle Mosley, the Olympic champion. Tony Yoka's uh, wife. That'd be a good fight. And again, working through the other mandatories as well. And then she'll fight again later in the year, possibly against Natasha Jonas in a rematch, or preferably, I think, for, for Katie right now, is the Serrano fight. You know, that's a fight that I've reached out to Luda Bell. I think we should try. You know, we've, we've been through the ego and the bluster and the arguments. Let's get it done. So, plans well underway for Katie Taylor and a very exciting few months ahead. Okay. Just quickly, heavyweight update as in, have you spoken to Dave Allen? We know he's kind of doing some stuff or no, planning to no, do some stuff with Dennis he's, Hobson. No, he's fighting. I think he's fighting uh, soon, isn't he? I think he looks great. I saw him on Instagram the other day. He messages me every now and again about some of his fighters, which we try and 
look out for and I'll give them to the boys to see if there's any opportunities for them. Um, and Fabio Wardley, Fight Camp, Alan Babic. I'm trying to get Alan Babic on in Newcastle and also a big fight for Alan Babic at Fight Camp, which you've seen on that piece of paper. Um, so just waiting to hear if he wants to take those dates. Huey Fury? Huey Fury is likely to go in Fight Camp as well. He needs to get out. Obviously had a bad cut against Maris Wack, but um, working on a fight for him, quite an interesting fight. And other heavyweights. Anything for Pricey? Yeah, I, I still like Huey Fury against David Price. You know, I think it's... I think sometimes you've got to make... There's a lot of people in log jam at the moment in the division. And I just think you have to make relevant fights that people people get excited about, people want to tune into. Um, but I really see Huey having one more fight and then moving forward into a really big test later this year. Saw Liam Smith and Vargas going at it on social media the other day. Any legs in the future for that fight? Uh, maybe. I mean, Liam Smith was very unlucky, you know, um, in Russia. Went out there... Should have got the decision, didn't get the decision, but did lose. So it was a bit of a kick in the nuts. But working on a big fight for Liam as well. And we'll be in Liverpool with a big show in October. So I expect him to feature on that. It's about time he went back to Liverpool, mate. Yeah, oh, mate. Well, that's right on the list. I mean, Newcastle, unfortunately, we can only have a 1,000 in Newcastle. But when we move forward, we'll be planning fight camp here. We'll have a crowd, which will be great. How many? About 500. And then... Um, September the 4th, Headingley, uh, which will, will be 20,000, hopefully, by then. AJ, end of August, September, could be anywhere between 40 and 70,000, rules permitting. And then Liverpool in October, and the card we've got planned for Liverpool is obscene. So that'll be an 8,000 sellout as well. So looking forward to normality. Like I said, we've seen it stateside. It was good to see. I saw, shout out to Sam Eggington as well. Good win on Saturday. I caught a bit of that. He boxed really nice. Um, and good to see, I think they had 800 or 1,000 in there or something like that. Just nice to see people back, you know, looking forward to it. And with what we've got planned, as you've seen on the piece of paper, for Fight Camp and Leeds and uh, Liverpool, and we are absolutely going for it, mate. Going for it. So. Is Newcastle a bubble? Uh, not a strict bubble, I believe, but there will be testing. But again, subjects are bored. And fight camp. Because you've said you want to keep the kind of aspects of it. What we've learned from the bubble experience is the ability <coughs> excuse me. The ability to have better access to the fighters. You must have seen it as well. And just having people around. So moving forward on our fights, I want all fighters to be into the hotel by Wednesday. Um, and photographs, media obligations on Wednesday, Thursday is the press conference, Friday is the weigh-in, you know, doing workouts. A lot's going to change this summer. As you know, Matra Media now will be working across all our live production. There'll be much more content. There'll be preview shows. There'll be documentaries. There'll be live feeds. It's going to be on another level. So we want to make sure that we've got the fighters captive so we can do the best job for them. But what won't be the same is you won't have to come in, test, go to your room, wait 12 hours and not leave the hotel. So you come into the hotel, take care of your media obligations, but you can go as you please. And hopefully life will be back to normality. As much as I'm really happy about matching media for you, a lot, a lot of concerns, a lot of people tweeting me going, what does this mean for Coogan and IFL? Just, right, mate. No, but just don't start pulling any of your funny what, strokes. Mean, what, like strokes like trying to build our own platform? No, no, I've no problem with you doing that because you've been doing that quietly for a few years now anyway. But I'm just saying, like, maybe just closing a couple of doors, you know, I'm so trying to still like knock on doors. So no, when not exclusives. I'm just saying on, like, fight nights and stuff, you know, like, you know, we've operated in a certain way. Yeah, you, you've operated in a way which means you can basically float around anywhere backstage and get wherever you want. With your consent? Saying. Yeah, that, that won't change because that's raw. What we're looking to do... I'll go back to Matra Media, okay? When you create something, when you create a narrative or an event, I want to be able to take that from, like I said, inception through the build-up to fight night itself and deliver fight night in the way I, I want it or the team wants it to be delivered. Um, we also have our feelings on who is the best talent 
in the sport of boxing in terms of presenters, commentary, um, you know, analysis, coaching, scoring. You know, we want these shows to be a lot more interactive and it's going to be a complete game changer. Like as much as what we're doing on that pad is going to be a game changer, what we're doing on screen is going to be even more of a game changer. And I think that British fight fans, they're very responsive, sometimes positively and negatively, about the broadcast, right? They're almost more critical, aren't they, of... The, that gets talked about sometimes more than the fight. the fight. So, but that means it's important to them. So when I drop the new Matrim Media broadcast team and talent team, I'm taking that very seriously. I want the people that I believe are the very best at what they do. Okay, so there's been a huge amount of time and investment that's gone into that team because I'm, again, I'm picking the people that I believe through what I've seen in terms of the responses from fight fans, I'm picking the team of people that I believe they will want the most. And, you know, the fights, the fights, is your core product. That's more important than anything. But the talent team, you know, the way it's delivered to the to the fan, to the viewer, the interaction, it's going to be just a complete game changer. Complete game changer. And we've not got long now. I do hope you're keeping the weird double act of Barker and Lloyd. They're, they're, kind, they're kind of like, you know, part of the furniture, those boys. But you've got to... You have to bring in some freshness, but you also have to have credibility and integrity. I'm not saying that Barker and uh, and and uh, well, Lloyd, Lloyd has have Barker. Hmm. But, but what I'm saying is, see, I see someone like Chris Lloyd has an unbelievable future in boxing broadcast. Right? He's incredibly smart. He's a, a fantastic commentator. He's a great interviewer. He's great on tactics. He's, I mean, he's, he's, you know, even the stuff that he produced himself with Frampton, brilliant. He's going to be a guy that's going to be around, if he wants to be, because he may want to do something else in his life. But as a, he's, he is a top commentator and will get better and better and better. So you need, you need a bit of freshness. You need, like I said, the credibility of someone that's been doing this for a long time, you know, has been involved in big fights, has a great voice. You need freshness in other areas. I want the best analysis, I want tactics, I want to talk about scoring, I want to, you know what I mean? I want this to be completely fresh, the ring walks, the look and feel, the live event experience. This is going to be a fucking game changer. Sorry, mate. It's about to run out, so 10 seconds, Eddie, just sign us out. Thank you for your time today. Uh, you've got actually 25 seconds. Okay, good. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't deliver the news you wanted to deliver. I did absolutely everything I can. We will get there. Stay focused. Keep supporting AJ because I tell you something, he wanted that more than anything. Now, for now, on to Vegas. Devin Haney, Jorge Linares, Martin Ward in the final eliminator, Jay Quigley against Mosley Jr., Chantel Cameron defending the title, Ramler Alley also on that card as well. Let's go. Las Vegas. Keep smiling. See you soon.